The world today is an isolated, fragmented world. We are tribal creatures. We're, spent, we're meant to have a tribe, be surrounded by people at all times, and have a sense of belonging. But no, the majority of Americans report having zero people who truly know who they are, and zero people they can rely on in a crisis. Over 50% of Americans are completely alone. And what do you do when you're completely alone? When you have no close friends, no close friend, family members, you don't know how to connect deeply with others. I know how to, but I don't, I don't have a way to find those people. I mean, I do. There are ways. There are or organizations that I can join, uh, meetings I can go to, uh, you know, church events I can go to. I can start becoming involved. I can start going out on the weekends with my girlfriend and start making new friends and building a social life. And that's one of the most important things for motivation. If I don't have a social life, I'm not getting positive feedback from people when I'm doing well and negative feedback when I'm not doing well, then why strive for self-actualization? Why strive to become better physically, mentally, career-wise, financially? Why strive to have a positive impact on the world around you when you're completely alone? So many people are stuck and there's no one addressing the crisis of loneliness. Loneliness this loneliness, this fragmented world we live in, a lot of people are writing about it, but it's not in the national dialogue. There aren't, like, people like Jordan Peterson and other people who write self-help books don't write about how to deal with this loneliness, how to find people with whom you can have real connections with, what it's like to truly connect with someone, what does it mean to truly trust someone, what does it take to develop a close friendship, what does it take to develop a healthy family. What does a healthy family look like? How to communicate with others, how to build a healthy family, how to raise your children, how to communicate with your wife, how to communicate with your husband, uh, how to have a, how to balance a, a healthy social life with attending to your own needs and your own individuality, how to balance collectivism and individuality. You need that collectivism, that sense of belonging with others, but you also need your individuality. We can, we've become too focused as a civilized, as American society, as American civilization, on individuality, and we've lost the importance of feeling a part of something. Japan is a, more of a collectivist society. You know, they're, when you address someone, you say their first, their last name first, and their first name second. Their family name it takes more precedence than your individual name, because you're seen primarily as a member of your family. All right, you're seen as a member of a group, and Japan is very, very focused on people getting along and having, you know, being close and respecting other people and providing people the right respect and understanding the hierarchy within groups, you know, senpais and kohais and so on and so forth. Most people won't understand what I'm speaking about, but you can have a collectivist, you can have collectivism, you can have a sense of belonging, you can have that that tribe without having a socialist economic system you know you can feel a part of the group and also be an individual that's something that we need to address it's something we need to write about and talk about and i'm just so angry with the world today because it's so fucked up because people have fucked it up so bad they've let the worst human beings rise to power and our medical system is fucked up our schools are fucked up our medicine is fucked up our food is fucked up. Our environment is fucked up. Our houses are fucked up. Our architecture is fucked up. Look at our fucking architecture. Everything is ugly. We used to make everything beautiful. Every civilization had its own unique, beautiful type of architecture. Look at what Atlantic City looked like in the 20s. You know, you watch shit like Boardwalk Empires that shows you what the world looked like in the 20s. People were still building beautiful houses with beautiful architecture. Now everything's so plain and ugly and just you know, just functional, like this, you know, postmodern neo-nonsense is just embedded into our very architecture. We live in an ugly world, and we live with ugly people, and with toxic people all around us, and we don't know how to find the right type of people, how to develop and cultivate virtues like strength, honesty, integrity, Courage, moral courage, critical thinking, individual thinking, um, wisdom, knowledge, rhetoric, creativity, self-expression, 
connection with others, the ability to empathize with others, the ability to connect deeply with other people, the spiritual experiences, all these aspects of one's life. And then on top of all the virtues and those dynamics, you have your career, you have finance, you have um, your physical and mental health, and all of these things, all of these things, there's all of these things are so complex. People don't know what a healthy diet looks like. There's so many different people saying what's healthy and what's not. You have vegetarianism and paleo diet, and you have uh, ketogenic diets, and you have you know low glycemic index carb diets. You have bodybuilding diets. You have weight loss diets. You have all this stuff, and it's like. All right, what do I eat to be healthy? And most people don't know. And then it's like, how how do I work out? Like, what do I need to do for my phys for my body? Like, what's exercise regimen should I follow? People don't know. They just join a group, or they, or they don't go at all, and they don't know how to do exercises in the proper form.